Hey, Joe here at Red's Fly Shop. I'm on a week-long trout fishing trip, uh, but no matter where you're going, uh, there's some gear that I want to share with you that's just part of my kit, and I, I think uh, it's worth mentioning. Uh, it's 2024, and uh, this is what I'm using when I jump in the car uh, and go somewhere uh, adventurous. First, I'll just show you Jackalope Rod Tube. I've done uh, different reviews of this, but I think uh, when you want to bring extra rods, you're not sure what rods you need for a situation, you just throw this in the car, hit the road with it. I put the reel I'm using on the outside for the day. This is empty right now because I've got my rod set up and then I got a few extra rods in here. You can carry it on a plane, it's padded, you can get into it from both ends. Uh, we're on a <clears throat> trip to Patagonia right now and I don't care whether you're going to Idaho, Montana, Patagonia, or Washington State where I live. Uh, just being able to organize your gear and move fast is going to help you be spontaneous and organized. Every day we leave the, the lodge, we break our rods down, they go in the tubes, and we want to protect those rods, so I think that's important. Waders, uh, it doesn't really matter what waders you have as long as they're super comfortable. Uh, I like the Squala Back Eddies uh, for this trip. Uh, they're super comfortable, super durable, lots of features. Totally different review on waders. Under my waders, I'm just wearing a light base layer from Grundens. Uh, I like just a legging, I call it a tight, if you will, uh, but I think that's a great way for to be able to move within your waders, do lots of hiking, be comfortable, and also get moisture off your skin and utilize the breathable uh, nature of breathable waders. But uh, try your waders on before they fit or before you leave to go on a big trip if you're going to be walking and hiking. I think it's really critical you're going to spend many, many hours in these things. Get your layering system uh, right and good. As far as uh, fishing gear goes, I've got this Fish Pond Thunderhead uh, backpack. I like a backpack when I'm going to be away from the rig all day, uh, more so than a sling pack just because I've got a rain jacket and some other stuff that I'll share with you. Uh, backpacks aren't the easiest to get in and out of while you're wading in the water, so I keep fly boxes and floating and little goodies in my little you know, side pockets or my, my saddle bags right here. That's where I'll put my, uh, my quick access items. But when I need to get in the backpack, just a little tip for you is if you're in the river, you can hold your rod under your arm or something like that, but you can get in the backpack mid-river uh, if you have to, but I tend to keep uh, stuff on the sides. I've done you know big, long wade fishing excursions that have mixed weather, and I'm going all day with sling packs and stuff, but I get tired of relying on uh, other people to carry jackets and food and that kind of stuff, so I just like to be completely self-contained. Now, waterproof backpacks don't have a lot of features. You've got one small pocket on the outside where I might keep things that uh, like sunscreen and stuff I need to get into uh, quickly. Inside, I like to have some compartmentalization. Uh, I've got some camera gear uh, in there, and uh, that that is really nice to be able to just set uh, aside. So compartmentalizing your gear within the backpack, I think, is a good call. Fish Pond also has these really cool stash pockets. This is where I've got things like all my tapered leaders, my extra floatant, uh, my extra hemos. Uh, that's really important to have uh, some redundancy. There's a saying that one is none and two is one. With hemos, I think that's really important. You have to be able to pinch barbs, cut line, tie knots, unhook fish, that kind of stuff. And uh, the scissor clamps actually can cut line, so it replaces a backup set of nippers. Sinking leaders, I think, anytime you're going trout fishing, uh, a sinking leader like that is nice. You can just turn your floating line into a sink tip for a little bit. And then a variety of different tapered leaders. Uh, toilet paper, line cleaners, I think are really important. Uh, fly lines tangle less the excess running and stripping line when they're clean. Then uh, I clean my lines a couple times uh, during a week of fishing or every few outings uh, during the regular season. A little Leatherman, I think, is really important. I've done lots of streamside repairs uh, with that. Now, if I was nymph fishing and stuff like that, I might have some, some split shot and other things in there. We're primarily dry fly fishing and streamer fishing. On my neck, I have <clears throat> a very basic lanyard. There's lots of more complicated ones uh, that have more stuff, but I just put my relevant tippet on my lanyard right there and uh, it slides on and off. And uh, this is an elastic cord. Uh, so it stretches real nice, very comfortable. And then I use my scissor clamps to cut line as well as pinch barbs and that kind of stuff. Inside, uh, of course, I've got water. We've been hiking all day. Uh, always have a hydro flask. 
We'll talk about, uh, yeah, we'll just do it in order. Uh, rain jacket, this is my uh, shake dry, essentially, uh, Squala Carbon rain jacket. It, it's critical in my opinion, if you're gonna have uh, little rain squalls move through where it's gonna rain a little bit and then get dry, having a lightweight jacket that you can just shake it a few times and it's essentially dry is much better than a real heavy duty rain jacket. Of course, if you're gonna be in a monsoon, you know, having a, a real heavy duty, you know, heavy duty jacket is good, but this thing breathes really well. So I can wear this thing dry. So if it's wet, I can leave it on. I'm gonna wear it, it breathes great. All the moisture is gonna be out of here. Really, really like an ultra lightweight rain jacket. The Squala Carbon, it's a pretty Gucci jacket. Not everybody's gonna spend this much on a lightweight jacket, but if you want something good, you're gonna love and wear it a lot. Uh, I think it's good. Rain jackets generally have been miserable for me to wear in the past. This one is really light and very, very comfortable. It's got pretty good stretch qualities for a waterproof shell. Now inside, let me throw away one of my <clears throat> other waters here. Now inside, uh, we're just, we're organizing. Uh, there's an insert that you can get for these fish pond backpacks. I would suggest just watching a review of the insert. I don't have an insert in here, but most of my fly boxes I've got labeled, uh, like you can see there, and they sit upright pretty well. So my fly boxes that I'm not using and I'm not, I don't need immediately at my disposal can go in here. The other thing I use are these fish pond fly, uh, fly pucks. In fact, let me show you that right there because I just think that's for eight bucks. It's super handy and those are flies that need a home. Uh, maybe I'm not gonna dig out my fly box. It's where I get uh, steel flies from my guides uh, after they loan me a fly. I just shove them in here. One of my guides is filming this. He, he thinks that's pretty funny. He's, mm -hmm. It's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for eight bucks, uh, those fly pucks are pretty handy and they're, they're very waterproof. So uh, my backup tippet, uh, pretty much every situation I might be in is gonna be represented there with fluorocarbon or regular. Uh, I like the SA tippet because there's a line cutter right there. So I can actually, I don't need uh, my cutters. I can actually utilize the line cutter uh, right there for my tippet. So the SA stuff's really nice because it's got the cutter. Always have backup sunglasses. My Costas are in here. Uh, fishing without glasses, you might as well be fishing blind. So I've got my backup glasses. And then this is a box out of my big kit bag that I just threw in here. <clears throat> but a uh, bunch of hoppers for today's fishing. But my big dry flies, I like to have some place where I can kind of check them out and kind of see what uh, which one's which one's wagging its tail or winking at me. That's how I choose which one to use. But these pockets are really nice. Uh, those come uh, with this bag, and then if you get like the fish pond cut bank gear bag, that's a tackle bag. It comes with uh, one of these, and you can actually just, and I think you can buy these separate from fish pond. In fact, I'll link it in the video description. I'm 99% certain we, saw, we stocked those. Uh, but that goes right uh, down there, and then it Velcros in, so I can just yank that out when I need to. So that's pretty, pretty handy, but the backpack works pretty good. As far as boots go, <clears throat> uh, these boots, uh, I like the corkers. You can see I've got a rubber sole on today. This river was, we spent 90% uh, of our time casting uh, from like the muddy banks. And so I put the rubber soles in when I'm gonna be walking outside the stream. And uh, I have found it to be really handy. I know that uh, I don't think corkers, at one point, I think people thought corkers might be a gimmick like 15 years ago. These things are legit. Almost all the guides down here wear them, almost all the customers doing this because on this trip, we're in big swift rivers that are slippery and we might be walking muddy spring creeks. I just keep uh, whatever soles I need handy and I can put my felts in or my studs in. Today, I needed really good rubber traction, so I've got those today. But I think that Corker's boots uh, are awesome. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm rocking. Uh, and then every day, whether you're leaving your house or you're leaving a motel, camping, you know, your camp. Uh, I like a waiter bag is really nice to have. And uh, so it just, it's kind of a grab and go. I'm not going to shove my waders in here right now. But basically when I leave anywhere, I've got my waiter bag, I've got my backpack, and I've got my rod tube. And that's it. Those three things. I will leave the house, I will leave the car, I will leave the lodge, I will leave my tent, whatever I happen to be doing. Those three pieces of gear contain everything I need uh, for the day. 
there's lots of other stuff you could add on. If I'm a long ways from the rig, I might want an extra rod on my backpack, yada, yada, yada. Where's your first aid kit? I'm sure there's lots of stuff that I missed. Um, but that's just a quick sample of how I organize my gear uh, between keeping my real boots on the outside, internal stuff sacks, uh, the little go bags from Fish Pond, uh, like that. And then uh, the waiter bag for me is great because if you're fast and efficient uh, when you're beginning and ending your day, you're gonna get a lot more fishing time in. And uh, so when I'm out, uh, when I'm out during the day, back in my waiter bag, instead of having shoes bouncing around all over the rig, everything that I change in or out of, I'm wearing just, like I said, I just wear Grundon's lightweight base layer leggings. I think, I can't believe I haven't been doing that my whole life. It's just so much more comfortable wearing something that's not quite compression fit, but just tighter in your waders. It's way better. Uh, but my shorts or my pants or whatever, I'm gonna slip on after I change. Everything goes right in this bag, and then boom, I'm on the road and moving. So, uh, that's a quick look at most of my gear. For this trip, uh, I fished one rod for the entire week, and that is happens to be a six weight Sage R8. I've personally grown when it comes to like Western style fly fishing, uh, where you're gonna have shots at some larger fish. Uh, you're gonna throw maybe some streamers or some big flies. I have really grown to like using a six weight. I can cast a five weight far enough, that's not an issue, but the durability of the six weight and the six weights accuracy in the wind with large flies is just superior to a five. Uh, so the six weight uh, for me has been great. I like the little fighting butt. And uh, I used a couple different reels this week, but uh, I did like this Arbor XL. Um, I switched up midweek just to try something different. This was a gift. Uh, I got two reels gifted to me recently, and this is one of them. And I did like the pickup, the retrieve rate of the really big Arbor. But the regarding rods, and if we can speak just more for trout fishing let's say in Patagonia specifically and Patagonia represents like what it's like fishing all over Montana but like on steroids so situationally it's be pretty similar but the six weight I like if I'm going to have one rod to rule them all is going to be an all water six weight buy the R8 if you can afford it that'd be great uh, but it they're they're pretty Gucci again uh, whatever six weight you get I think it's important for it to be all water and you can see that it's got a smaller guide right here. Smaller guides on trout rods versus like a saltwater six weight or a streamer rod have way more accuracy and control. The guides are smaller, which gives you just a much straighter cast, better tracking. Big shooting guides will allow you to blast sink tip lines and streamers a country mile, but they're not gonna be great for that short game where you need to make these extremely accurate 15 to 50 foot casts. So I think it's important when you're looking at six weights to know that you need to be looking at an all water multi-purpose six weight and not a streamer oriented or saltwater oriented six weight. My fly line is a Rio Gold. Uh, I thought that was probably not the best choice for this type of fishing. I think something like a Rio Bank Robber or almost any other line other than a Rio Gold. We threw a lot of big flies and the gold is more designed for surgical precision with smaller flies. I did fine with it. Uh, but if I were setting up somebody else, I'd probably be thinking about a line that's a little bit more buff out there in the tip to turn over big hoppers and things like that. Uh, but that's my basic gear set uh, where I'm at here today, 2024. Hopefully some of this is helpful and hopefully some of the information transfers to, uh, to your local fishery or wherever you're heading on your next big trip.